Hello everybody, this is Mark with Shadow Wolf Designs here with yet another uh, Lightwave 3D tutorial. Today we're going to be going over basically how to set up a working windmill. And I'm also going to quickly cover how to throw in grass. Now for this tutorial, you're going to need at a minimum of two pieces. I have two in here right now, I need to add one more. And um, if you have pieces laid out like this, you'll need at least three pieces. Now the third piece that I have yet to make, and I'm actually going to make that right now, is your ground plane. And it's very important to have this ground plane because this is where I normally put my grass. You can do it easier to save your render time and make like a little potted thing of grass. That'll work as well. And I'm going to add some geometry in here so I can deform it later. But let me select this because I don't want it on this layer. I'm going to put it on a different layer. So up here in the corner, you have layer 1, 2, we're going to click on 3 and paste that down. So your windmill is going to have the body of the windmill and then the blades and this part includes the support bar that actually they rotate on. Um, this just makes it easier. Now there's two ways that you can animate the windmill. Um, my preferred method is bones and if you see here I actually have a bone structure and I have a weight map and the way you want to set up your bone is I had both these layers selected and I put the bone right inside this rod I have my my anchor bone right here and then my other bone is right inside here and it goes from end to end and this right here doesn't need extra geometry because it's just a rod and it's going to move. You want it to be smooth and that's about it. But it goes from end to end and then the weight map for this will go into uh, weight shade mode. And if I hop on the windmill, it's the blades and the rod with everything else unaffected. Now that's how you set up the weight map for this and either way you're still going to be using the same methods that uh, Brian Martin went over in class to get the continual movement. But I'm gonna before I send this over to layout I'm gonna make sure I sub patch my ground for the displacement and then I'm gonna file save and I don't have the option to send it to layout so I'm gonna go ahead and close this and we're gonna pop it back open I accidentally opened two copies the first time so that uh, locked out my ability to go to layout so we're gonna send it to layout now alright so we have our I have my hideous model hopefully your models look better and before I forget I'm gonna switch, add some textures in here so we can see stuff move so I'm going to go to layer 2 and just select everything or I won't select anything because if you don't have anything selected it applies to everything this is going to be blades and I'm going to set the color to a brown hit OK click smoothing then I'm going to come over here to this layer hit Q and this is base and I want a blue base hit OK, smoothing on, alright and then on the ground I'm gonna hit Q, ground, click on here, I'm gonna make it a me medium green and then hit OK. Then I'll switch to layout and you'll actually see the change reflected. Looking good, not really, but looking good. Alright, now first things first, grass, because grass takes a little bit longer to play with. I recommend if you're having trouble with grass, go on YouTube. There are tons of videos by people that are a lot better than me with grass. And I mean, you'll learn some stuff that you never even thought you could do with grass. 
uh, because it's actually fibers. And actually first I will cover the windmill portion because that's the most important portion of the lesson. And then I'll cover grass. And if we don't have time, I'll have to cover grass in a separate lecture. And that'll give me a chance just to refresh. We're going to go to windmill layer 2. And we have an issue. This point right down here, that's my pivot point. Now with it down here, if I press the space bar, it gives me the rotation tool. And this is the axis, this blue one, or my bank. This is the axis that I want to rotate around. With my pivot point where it is, that's not a very good rotation. That's not going to work for a windmill. So you have two options. You can go into Modeler, and you can come in here and hit F2. What F2 will do is it'll center your model. Now if I come back into Layout, I then actually have to move my model up. But then I can do the rotation. Oh, if I click the right axis. But then we got this nice rotation here. Sort of nice. I have an elliptical um, thing instead of a square one. But we want to set our starting keyframe, so zero. And then we'll come out to 60 and set our second keyframe. And I'm going to say every two seconds, it does one full rotation. So, one awkward but full rotation. And then I'm going to pop this up to 300. And now we're going to do what we need to do to keep this going for the full 300 frames because at this point it stops. What you need to do is you need to click on this little E right next to the bank or the blue button. And it'll open up this graph editor. And you see it has this is a keyframe. This is a keyframe. What you need to do is you need to change uh, pre behavior to offset repeat and post behavior to offset repeat. And what this does is it, you notice how it goes down and then up, and we'll zoom out here. What this does is it does a constant uh, gradient right here, or a constant increase, and it starts beforehand so it looks like it's it's not just starting the motion there. If I were to come here to negative 60 frames, you can actually see it goes the whole time. We'll bump this back up to zero. But now you have a constant motion. Now, if you were going to do this with bones, what you would have to do and hit cancels. I'm going to right click on here, delete keys. All right, now with the bones, what you need to do is I want to come into Modeler and undo this shift. Okay, so you go to Setup, and mine is under uh, Add and Convert Bones or Convert Skeletons to Bones. No Skeletons in the current layer, so I need to go to Layer One, Convert Skeletons into Bones. All right, two bones created. Now right up here we have Perspective, Ear view and then we have this little drop down right here so we want to turn on bone x-ray and that lets us see our bones we click on the bone and now what we can do is we can rotate it so we're going to start at zero and then go out to we're going to set a keyframe okay come out to 60 Change this to 360. And we see this weight shade. We're having issues with it. Or the weight map. And that's because the bone's on one layer and the object's on another. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that out and put it on the same layer. Now when we mess with the bone, 
let's uh, hop in here to layer one. Go to bone one. Actually, we need to be on bone two because it is bone two. And we have our two keyframes. So let's come back up to that because it cleared it out. 360. And now we're still having issues with this. And the problem is, is that we'll put our object back on the other layer. We'll take these bones, take them out, put them on the appropriate layer. And I'm, this is just showing you different things that can happen with bones. All right, so bones, bone two. And it's probably still going to have the same issue. So what we need to do is hit the minus key, delete bone two from scene. Hit the minus key again, delete bone one from scene. Now go back to objects, go to layer two, or whatever layer your bone is on. Hit more, convert to skeletons. Click on bones. Now we got bone two again. Now we get this good little rotation going on. And you'll set up whoa. And you'll set it up the exact same way as you would the other one. So we got zero frame. And we'll actually change this to zero. 60, change this to 60, or sorry, 360 for one full rotation. And now we have bam. And this little glitch you're seeing here, that's because of my model, not because of Lightwave. Click on the E, pre and post behavior to offset repeat. And now we scrub along and it's a constant circle. That is how you do um, that's how you make a windmill animation the easy way. Um, this can also be applied to lighthouses except you would uh, play with a different axis. You would, I would play with this one and you can actually set it up with a light. A light spinning around. Um, I will cover grass in a separate tutorial because this one's starting to reach a, a sort of long point. Um, grass can be a pain, but if you can get it right, it looks good. Um, and just if you want to try and play with it, because I'm not going to record it the same day, uh, used to be under FX Tools, and it is, it still is, it's Fiber FX. And then you just click on your layer and then activate and then you start playing with these settings to make your grass appear and to actually see it you have to click on this little eyeball but this would be really simple grass it doesn't look that great and it might not even be visible it's how, all you see is the shadows but I will go over and cover this in the next tutorial so Keep an eye out. It'll be uploaded on Sunday, uh, May 5th. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please leave a like below. If you have not subscribed to my channel and you would like to see more of my content, please click the subscribe button next to my name. If you would like to see another Lightwave tutorial, um, just uh, leave a comment below telling me what you'd like to see. Um, Make sure to check my playlist because this is not the first one I've done. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll see you next time. Have a good day.